Hi there, guys. Uh, let's jump right into the Bible today. This is, I'm going to forewarn you, today's lesson is going to be short. Don't get used to it. But uh, I do want to let you know that it is going to be shorter. Uh, now, we've talked a lot about the Holy Spirit, what he's done, uh, what he is supposed to do in our lives. But I want to set that, that type of thing aside, and I want us to talk about a very common item that you probably know already a lot about, and that's the item of sandpaper. You know what sandpaper is. It's that stuff that you take to make wood or sometimes metal and to make it nice and smooth. See, as you take that piece of sandpaper, there's little things on there that help rub off all of the edges, all of the rough stuff to make it nice and smooth. And as you do that, it creates this thing called friction. It would be like if you took both of your hands and you took them together and you rub them together real fast, your hands start to warm up because of this thing called friction. It's this science-y term. Well, the Holy Spirit creates friction in our lives. In fact, in the lives of every person, he creates this friction. And that friction is called Conviction. But what does this big word convict mean? What does the word convict mean? Well, let's talk about that real quick. The word convict means to present or expose facts, to convince of the truth, to convince of error or sinfulness. All right. Those are some very big words. Those are some very big things. It reads like it's out of a dictionary because it is. But what does the Bible say about conviction? What does the Bible say that it's about? Well, he tells us that in the book of John. See, John chapter 16, verse 8 says this. And when he, he being the Holy Spirit, comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. See, that word convict literally means he's going to impress upon Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Well, those are, that's what it, the friction that the Holy Spirit creates if somebody doesn't know Jesus as their Savior. What was the first thing they said? He will convict them of sin. You guys know what sin is. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that breaks God's law and makes him sad. You guys know what that is. The Bible is very clear that we are a sinful people when we do not have Jesus. Or even when we do, we sometimes still sin. We do things that are wrong. And the Bible is very clear here in the fact that he's the Holy, one of the Holy Spirit's jobs in the life of an unbeliever is to convict those who don't know him of their sin, that they do things that are wrong. The Holy Spirit does the same thing for those of us who do know Jesus. But we'll talk about that and how that looks in a little bit. The second thing that John here in, in the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is going to convict the world of is not only sin, but also of righteousness. Now that word righteousness is this great big word, and we use it a lot in church. I use it a lot in church, or the adults will. But what does that really mean? Well, the word righteousness it literally just means this, right living, or living right. Living in a way that pleases God. See, God's righteousness, the way he believes we should be living our lives, is perfect. And we don't live up to that. So the Holy Spirit convicts us that we don't live up to the God's form of righteousness. See, he convicts the world of that last word, which is called judgment. He reminds us, he reminds those who don't know him, that there is eternity waiting. That forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, beyond time, punishment is going to happen for our sin. See, the whole point of what the Holy Spirit does in the life of an unbeliever is to show them their need for Jesus. In fact, Jesus says that in that same passage. In verse 9, he sees this, concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Jesus said, hey guys, this is, this is the fact of the matter. This is why he's going to do all these things. I'm leaving. The ruler Satan is judged. He's beaten. And you know what? They sin because they don't believe in me. 
So here's the question. How are you going to respond to the friction of conviction of the Holy Spirit in your life? Is he convicting you of your sin? Is he convicting you that, you know, you don't live the right way? Is he convicting you that, you know what, God's going to punish us someday? Reminding you that there's eternity on the other side. That there's forever and ever and ever on the other side. That's the friction that the Holy Spirit brings for those who don't know Jesus. But what about those who do? What's the friction that is created for the believer? Well, for that, we've got to turn in our Bibles to the book of Galatians in chapter 5. Galatians 5 and verse 16 says this, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Okay, again, lots of big words, lots of different things. Here's something I want you to understand here. With the Holy Spirit inside you, a new type... The friction begins. Friction begin. That friction is between God's way of thinking and living and your old way of thinking and living. That, that old way of thinking and living is what Paul here in the book of Galatians is referring to as the flesh. The flesh, your old way of doing things, doing things that please you, doing things that only make you look better and not to serve and help others. See, the friction that the Holy Spirit brings is the fact that you no longer want to do things the old way, but you want to do things God's way. This is a good thing because as the Holy Spirit works on us, we can become and we can walk more by the Spirit. We can yield to Him. We can give Him the right of way in our lives, which means that we can live in a way that is pleasing to God. These two sometimes, oftentimes, go like this. They go against one another. And what does that do? That creates friction in, their, in our lives. Guys, we have to respond to the friction of conviction in our lives. So let me, let, let's ask this question. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Do you know him? Or are you feeling the conviction of sin, the conviction of the fact that you don't live up to God's standard, the fact that one day you will be judged for the things that you do? And if you do not have Jesus, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Or have you put your faith and your trust in Jesus? Have you said, I'm all in with Jesus he is the only way that I can be forgiven of my sin. He's the only way that I can live in a way that's pleasing to God. The book of John says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. Have you done that? The Bible also says, but if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that he has raised him from the dead, that he will forgive you of your sin. Have you done that? Have you put your trust in Jesus? If you haven't, I hope that you will today. It's rather simple. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died on the cross and confess that to him. Tell him that. Pray and say, Jesus, I have sinned and I need you in my life. I want to do things your way. So I give you myself. I receive you as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You can pray something just like that. Maybe you already have done that, and you're saying, okay, but what about this friction of doing the old things the old way? How do I handle that? Well, when, he, when you feel that friction, do you give in to the Spirit and God's way of doing things, or do you do things in your own way? You do default back. You go back to the old way of doing things. That's the question. Can you, you could ask God today to say, God, when the friction of my old life and my new life butt heads, when they start rubbing against each other, help me to always give in to you. That's a prayer that we need to be praying every single day as believers, as those who know and trust Jesus.
So the real question is, how are you going to respond to the friction of conviction that the Holy Spirit brings in your life? And that is a question that only you can answer. I can't, but you can. I hope that you think about that as you continue throughout your week. And as I hope to see you again in another video real soon. Bye-bye, guys.